Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Welcome back um, to the second part of this uh, short lecture video. Uh, I'm going to uh, just discuss with you. We're going to share how uh, the same example uh, for three balance balance three force, a uh, balance three phase fault. Uh, now we are going to analyze what will happen to the bus and voltage if uh, the bus voltage and the uh, the fault current, uh, as well as the current flowing through all the lines if the fault occur at bus number one. Okay. So we have analyzed so far bus number three and bus number two, and then finally we are going to look at what will happen at bus number uh, four or okay, at bus number one. All right. So um, okay, we follow the same steps. Okay. So the first thing you need to draw the location of the fault. Okay. Then you can draw uh, like this as a switch. The fault can be represented as a switch and the fault impedance. Okay, to the ground. Okay. So and then after that. Uh, to to begin with our uh, to start with the Thevenin uh, uh, method, we need to short all the voltages, voltage source. So there's two voltage source here, voltage source number uh, two and number one. We short them to ground, okay, like so. And then uh, you can use the same uh, impedance that we have calculated before and uh, per unit. And then you need uh, up, other than shorting out all the uh, voltage source, you need to add a Thevenin voltage at the location of the fault because now the fault occurs at bus number one so you add this Thevenin voltage here negative on the top negative on the, on the, on the bottom facing toward the ground okay and you label the fault current here okay accordingly lah alright so uh, so uh, from this figure you can see that the vo Thevenin voltage is equal to the uh, the voltage as bus 2 before the fault which is assumed as 1 at the angle 0 okay so for the rest of the voltage also for all the three buses for type of fault, we also assume all the pre-fault voltage. Oh, sorry, this is bus number one. Sorry, yeah. All the pre-fault voltage, okay, is equals to one and then goes zero. And voltage at bus three, V of three, also at the angle one is the angle of zero. All per unit, eh? So all all value are voltage and impedance are all in per unit. Okay, so after uh uh you 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 redraw the figure like so and then you want to find the uh, Thevenin impedance okay so this is from from previous slide so you can bind them together as usual you can reduce these uh, three impedance uh, together to become one using while data transformation okay all right so sorry, sorry about i i'm sorry i i screw up again so basically you don't have to use while data here uh, um, what you need to do is basically uh sorry about that I was confused with the first uh, the first case the first case there. Okay, we need to always combine. So we don't have to always reduce this to uh, y. Okay, depending on the situation, depending on the where is location of the fault. In this case, as you can see here, this J zero point four are in series is in series with this uh, J zero point four in series right? because there's nothing coming up from bus number three here. So these two together are in series, and you can combine them together with uh, J zero point eight in parallel together. And then if you parallel together uh, using this formula and you have J0.4 lah. Okay. Uh, this is I can see that. Uh, okay. So you simplify the three resistor become become one. Okay. This J0.2 is the same J0.2. 0.4 is J0.4. Okay. Um, okay. Now then you further uh, simplify the network to find the uh, Thevenin equivalent network. Okay. So from here you can see that you can combine all these three together into one impedance. Which is... Um, as you can see that J0.4 here now is in series with uh, this equivalent impedance okay and these two together because you can combine the common ground okay it's like so if you like your circuit all right it's ground so all of these are ground connected so J0.2 here is in parallel with these two together lah okay so if you parallel them together okay like so okay so the equivalent impedance with uh for z11 or basically this is a z tabernin is 0 0.16 okay z11 here is basically the z tabernin okay all right so the z4 is 0, 0 0.6 okay so now after that you can calculate the fault current from this figure okay from this uh, reduced network you can calculate the fault current using the formula before is basically uh the the voltage uh, the fault voltage v tabernin here which is equal to v1 before the fault is equal to 1 at the angle of 0 because we assume all the voltage and all the buses are 1 per unit unless you are given a certain value okay if the value is not given then always assume it's always 1 per unit okay 
why we always assume one per unit i wonder okay because um in normal condition okay the system will try to fix the voltage at all location at one per unit one per unit means at 100% rated value lah so let's say uh, a, a bus is is rated at 132 kilovolt then a uh, one per unit equal to 132 kilovolt lah okay all right uh, <coughs> so in reality but in reality it's not really that true lah it can be 1.01 can be 1.05 it can be 0.95 so the voltage can fluctuate but basically it's, it's a very good estimate if you just estimate that equal to one lah okay so if you use the formula to find the fault current is uh the Thevenin voltage or the voltage at the faulted bus okay the voltage at the faulted bus now the fault occur at bus number one divided by the sum of feeders uh the z11 is basically the z Thevenin or z11 is the impedance a uh, total impedance as seen by the bus number one okay this bus number one see all this impedance plus the fault impedance okay all right and then together we become uh minus j3.125 per unit okay uh, so as you can see that uh, compared to example uh, case number one and number two see the fault at bus number one seems to have the highest fault color right it's j3.1 j miss pinita is three per unit okay previously i think we calculated uh, the fault color at bus number two is 2 per unit 2.5 and then bus number 3 is 2 per unit right around that figure but the worst as you can see that if a fault occurs at bus number 1 then you will have a higher value of fault current lah okay so as you can see the f even though we we are using the same network okay for a different location of fault we can have a different fault current okay so meaning that although the the, the, the pre-fault voltage are all the same okay but the uh because of the difference uh the, the, the different impedance that the the faulted bus c okay the different impedance the location of the the, uh, the of the impedance uh, of the bus uh, of the fault then you will see a different value of fault current okay that's a very important lesson to understand here okay so for the same network different location of fault can give you a different um value of fault current okay as usual we want to find other than fault current you want to find what are the voltages what will the fault current uh cause the voltage to uh, to reduce or to increase okay no normally reduce lah okay so you need to first in order to find the voltage you need to find the branch current okay the current flowing through all these two branches okay if you look at this branch current from here and current from here right or current from actually here lah and from these two branch here you look at this this figure here okay so what is the current uh flowing through this is uh basically this is i g1 the same i g1 and this is the same i g2 okay so um remember the same uh the same principle we can use the same current division except now uh you have the total current the four current here is now is i1 equals to uh, minus 3 point minus j 3.1 how much i forgot about that how much value 3.125 okay 3.125 per unit right okay so the total current is the i g1 plus i g2 is equal to minus j 3.125 okay this is the four color i1 during fault okay this is i1 sorry i1 fault so the total flow current here is equal to the, the the current flowing through these two branches here lah okay because there's no other other sources all right so this current here we also fl uh, flow through this branch here and also flow through this branch right okay so using uh, current divider rule okay you calculated that that the current ig1 is minus j2.5 and current ig2 is minus 0 0.625 all right so ig1 has a much larger current contribution compared to ig2 okay <coughs> all right maybe yeah it makes sense because as you can see that this the uh, the, the, the current here has to travel through a uh, very small impedance but the current here has to travel through a very uh, a lot of impedance right in order to go through to, to get through the fault so of course the current will be reduced there will be a lot of voltage drop and the current will be reduced because of the many impedance that this current ig2 has to flow through lah okay all right
okay so and then finally we want to calculate the, the change of bus voltage okay uh, similarly I think for bus uh, for bus number one okay this is delta v1 okay between those two point okay is equal to ig1 here ig1 is the current uh, ig1 here is the current flowing through this branch here multiplied by the impedance at this branch lah so okay minus j 0.2 divided by uh, multiplied by minus j 2.5 0.5 okay the change of voltage at bus 2 is basically at this location here bus 2 from uh what do you call positive uh, uh, sorry about that for the from the ground to bus number two okay so the change of voltage between those two points is just the current flowing in this branch multiplied by the impedance in this branch okay so uh, what's the impedance is 0 0.4 what's the current here is ig2 this is one is the flowing through the current flowing through this branch here is ig2 lah ig2 is the same current here okay and uh finally for the if you want to find the change of voltage at bus number three okay where is bus number three bus number three is here okay if you look carefully it's basically from this point here to this point to the ground point okay this is the change of bus v3 okay so basically the, the bus voltage you want to find the voltage from this point to uh bus number two plus the drop of voltage from bus number two to bus number three right so then we can find the total voltage from this point all the way to this point here okay so what's the uh, voltage drop from ground to bus number three is basically the a change of voltage bus bus number two plus this change of voltage okay basically change of voltage bus uh this change of voltage between bus two and bus three okay so bus change of voltage at bus number two is basically here we know calculated that is equal 0.25 it is this one so now here what is the change of voltage between bus 2 and 3 okay so if you look carefully okay let me clear this thing up okay so this current here okay we flow through these two branches like we split up into two okay use and fortunately um this these two impedance you add up together is equal to the uh, second branch here lah so remember uh for the same logic if you have the one current okay split into two branch right okay let's say this is 10 and the resistance here is also same let's say a and a so the the how many it, it doesn't matter lah okay so the current here 10 m so if you split into two branches which has the same resistance let's say this distance is uh 2 ohm 2, 2 ohm lah this is also 2 ohm lah. okay so what's the current flowing through is the branch is always equal to i equals v over r v equals r v equals i r okay so this is 10 divided multiplied by 2 okay so it's always 5 ampere flowing through here it's always 5 ampere flowing through this branch here lah because uh it, these two branches has the same resistor so similarly this one lah so because of these two branches has a total uh, has the same resistance so you split into two so remember that j the current uh, g2 is 0.625 so uh the current here will be j minus j 0.625 divided by 2 and here also minus j point zero point six two five divided by two okay all right so this is the, the two current that flowing through to each branch okay so if you want to find now now you want to find the uh the voltage drop between two and three so between here and here so it's equal to the voltage between two and three multiplied by the impedance in between them lah. so what's the the, the 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 sorry the current flowing through and three so the current flowing between bus 2 and 3 is j0.625 divided by 2 which is this one here multiplied by j0.4 okay so and then this one actually this is equal sign sorry equal point 0 0.375 okay so and then as usual you want to find what is the uh, bus voltage during the fall okay during the fall is the bus voltage before the fall or uh, pre-fault minus the change of voltage at that particular bus okay so this one we calculated this before yeah, this one actually we know already because the pre-fault voltage is always v1 at 0 is equal to v2 at 0 equals to v3 at 0 is always 1 at the angle of 0 lah. we'll always assume at 1 per unit unless you are given a different value okay and delta v1 is we just calculated just now okay so 1 minus 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 and the same for the rest of the bus lah okay yeah
Alright, so that's a change of voltage and the short circuit current are then we use the, the Ohm's law. Okay, so it's I voltage divided by impedance. Okay, so if you want, for example, if you want to find the what is the current from bus 2 to 1, which is from let's say from here to here. Okay, because remember now the fault occur at bus number 2, so the current direction now flowing from this way this way and then this way and then down here and then up here right it's the same branch lah okay and then down to the fork okay it will, it will merge the fork current will merge into this point and combine together become one large current here okay so um so the current between let's say uh between bus 2 and bus 1 is v2 minus v1 divided by j0.8 so that's why important the, the direction of the current flow is very very important okay if the current direction is the other way around, then the voltage will be reversed lah. Okay, so it depends on the location of the fault. So be very careful to draw the uh, location of the of the fault. Okay, of the fault current lah. Okay. Okay, so when you multiply them minus, minus them together, multiply by the impedance, you get minus J three zero point three one two five. And similarly, with a uh, current from bus three to one, three to one here. Okay and then from bus 2 to 3 okay so as you can see that uh, the current from uh, i31 sorry i23 and 31 is the same value lah okay because this is in series lah so it makes sense lah okay okay now for okay i think we are we have done uh i will finish my example explanation my explaining the example for uh, the balance three phase fault there are also many other example that perhaps maybe i can share you later on uh in the video or in any other example okay so just a few notes here that you know if you want to basically have a more accurate calculation okay so the pre fault voltage remember that initially before this in our example here we always assume that the p port bus voltage is always at one at the angle of zero per unit right okay so but that estimate might not be that accurate okay because as i said before the bus voltage can have a different value and if you remember from load flow analysis okay uh, when we use gauss idel uh, or newton Rasson, we will finally find the voltage at each bus can so we can use that result in order to replace the pre fault bus voltage okay and um, another way to include the, the in, to increase the accuracy of our fault calculation is to include the load current into fault analysis okay um we are not going to cover this in in our in our class um but basically when you include load currents basically, basically you, are, you are expressing the load current by a constant impedance at the pre fault bus voltage we are not going to cover that in this in this topic lah maybe later on in in the future later on okay uh, perhaps maybe you are going to cover this in your uh, if you take a uh, protection subject yeah, with Dr. Hendra okay I believe that's all for the uh, example for balance three phase um, I'll see you again uh, in our class uh, tomorrow um, to continue with uh, uh, either symmetrical components or maybe I'll touch a little bit upon the uh, the second method which is uh, bus impedance matrix okay so I'll see you again thank you very much for your attention bye now Assalamualaikum